the college football week eight preview here. And let me write down the times because I'm going to have to speed this along. I believe my wife is uh, is coming back shortly. So <laughs> uh, the biggest brand games, who is going to have the highest TV ratings this weekend? So this is effectively predicting who is going to be in the tightest games and which brands matter the most, right? Uh, number one, I think Ole Miss and LSU is going to be a lot of fun. That is a rivalry game. Everybody loves to watch LSU, especially Saturday night in Death Valley. The sun will be going down around the fourth quarter in this ball game. So, yeah, we're going to get a fun, fun matchup here. I think it might be a tight ball game. And if you get that, I think Ole Miss at LSU will be the number one rated game of the weekend, the most viewers. Iowa at Ohio State is going to be second. That is the Big Ten, uh, our Big Noon kickoff game for Fox. That's, I think, Ohio State, it doesn't matter who they play, uh, but the fact that it's Iowa, pretty big name matchup, uh, that should do pretty well. Texas at Oklahoma, I've got number three on this list. Obviously, two big-time brands. A lot of implications here as far as the Big 12 title game is concerned. Yeah, I like that one. UCLA at Oregon. While this is a huge matchup, a top-10 matchup, college game day is going to be there, etc., I don't know how much the rest of the country cares about these two brands. They just they have not rated well at any point thus far on the season. Maybe they will break through this week and, and do better than I assume that they will. Uh, but even four might be a little high for them on this. So I think it's going to be an awesome game. And it is on network. I mean, it's on Fox. So I think it's going to be huge. Um, I say it's on Fox. It might be on ABC. Not to, No, it's on Fox. It's on Fox. Uh, Mississippi State at Alabama. I've got that at number five. Alabama just brings in viewers, and it's on ESPN. People are going to watch, especially to see what ends up happening a week after they got beat by Tennessee. They're going to want to see what happens. Minnesota at Penn State. This is the ABC night game. It's a whiteout at Penn State. A lot of people will watch just for the novelty of it, and I don't blame them. I would, I would kind of will do the same thing. I'll probably have this on one of the side screens, uh, but that is that's an interesting matchup. We don't know if either quarterback is going to play, either starting quarterback. Um, going to be weird. I will say uh, I'm tossing out Clemson and Syracuse uh, at the very end of this. And that's I've got them at uh, what at number seven as far as the ratings. I just don't think Syracuse brings in viewers, and I don't think a lot of people really understand how big of a national matchup this is because Syracuse, if they win this, they are in the driver's seat for that division in the a- in the ACC. I, that's a huge matchup. So, and Syracuse has been good all year, just awesome, absolutely awesome. Moving along, our next question here is, what are going to be the most exciting games or the closest games? Now, by exciting, it's big plays, uh, explosive plays, etc. Like, which which games are going to provide that? I have got Ole Miss at LSU as number one on this. I think it's going to be the most exciting game of the weekend. Uh, you got two teams that don't really throw the ball a lot, but they are explosive on the ground. You've got some just athletes all over the field on both sides. And we know about Lane Kiffin. We know what he does, and he provides entertainment by himself. So uh, Ole Miss at LSU is number one for me. Houston at Navy I think is going to be a really, really fun ball game. I think I think Houston is going to win this game, uh, but I think Navy has been playing a lot better as of late. Houston's always crazy. Like all of their games, they've had three games go to overtime already. So And then they had that big 17-point comeback against, uh, no, 19-point comeback against Memphis just a couple weeks ago. Like, yes, Houston at Navy could be bonkers. Kansas at Baylor could be insane as well. I mean, pay attention to that Kansas team. This is a spot that they need to win. Like, they really, really do because the schedule does not lighten up at all. This is a spot where they might be able to get a win. I think Blake Shapin, the quarterback, might be out for Baylor. You got to take advantage and get to that bowl game. Get that sixth win. Take advantage of it. Boise at Air Force, I've got as a uh, most exciting game. That it, Tight spread, a defense that has stopped Air Force numerous times. Air Force, I don't know which version of that team is going to show up week in and week out. So that one I think could be really exciting. And then Kansas State at TCU, I think will be very exciting. Uh, obviously, TCU is undefeated. Kansas State only one loss. Huge, huge Big 12 title implications in this one. Uh, yeah, you're going to see some massive plays. You're going to see a bunch on the ground from Kansas State. You're going to see a bunch through the air from TCU. I cannot wait to watch that. 
which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose? Uh, Syracuse and Clemson, for sure, because uh, that's got ACC title stuff written all over it. Kansas State at TCU, we just talked about that. Big 12 title implications there. Whoever wins that is in the driver's seat. Uh, Texas A&M and South Carolina. Oh, 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 you want to talk about anxiety bowl for Jimbo Fisher. Uh, you, you've never lost to South Carolina before. You better not start doing it now. I'll tell you that. And Shane Beamer has a lot to gain from this one. Boy, you want to talk about selling the boosters on a situation? 100% on that one. Uh, Purdue at Wisconsin. Purdue wins this game. Look at the rest of their schedule. Just go look at it. They might win the Big Ten West this weekend with a win at Wisconsin. Uh, with Wisconsin, I mean, obviously, every game is like its own little season for uh, for that bunch, trying to figure out what they're going to do with their coaching situation. Uh, I like Jim Leonard, but if you can't get this thing turned around, you've got a pretty good roster. You need to figure something out with this one. Uh, Texas at Oklahoma State, I do think both of those, again, Big 12 title implications there, and UCLA at Oregon. Whoever wins that is in the driver's seat for the Pac-12. So a lot to be gained for both of those and a lot to lose as well. Uh, the most likely 10-plus point underdog outright winners. Let me go on and write down my time on this one. Uh, da, 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 da. Basically, which double-digit underdog has the best chance to win outright on Saturday? I got four teams written down. Syracuse, I mean, that kind of goes without saying. They're undefeated already on the season, and they have been a thorn in Clemson's side for years. Dino Babers came out at a press conference recently and was talking about how much fun his players have when they play against Clemson. They, they kind of use it as a, a measuring stick game, right, to see exactly where they are. That defense travels, that running game travels, and what Robert and I is doing with that offense is serious. So, yes, that is a that Syracuse legit chance to win a game. Uh, Marshall plus 12 and a half uh, against James Madison. That is something to pay attention to. Um, James Madison lost for the first time last week against Georgia Southern. And Marshall, you never know what version of them is going to show up. So pay attention there. North Texas plus 10 and a half at UTSA. Look, North Texas absolutely beat the brakes off of UTSA at the end of last season. I would imagine this is a revenge spot. But I'm not going to lie. UTSA did not look very good against Florida International last week. Would it surprise me to go two straight weeks looking awful? No, wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it would. I mean, I don't think North Texas is that good. So, yes. Uh, Vandy plus 14 at Missouri. My numbers actually have Vanderbilt favored. <laughs> I know it's insane. Missouri's got a pretty good defense. But, man, that Missouri offense is woefully bad. I mean, just I would never have expected that from an Eli Drinkwitz team. Uh and yet, here we are. Here we are. So, that's the way that this thing goes. Uh, the last thing on the docket here for us to discuss. And that would be the G5 games of the week. I got multiple here. Obviously, I'm watching Troy at South Alabama. That would have been my number one spot because I think that this is for the Sun Belt West. Memphis at Tulane. I think it would be very interesting. Tulane just entered the top 25 as a G5 team. Um Tulane has visions of the AAC championship. This is a good team. They got a good defense. Uh, but Memphis, I mean, they got players and they got a good run defense. I mean, they they got there's there's all the pieces there for them to be successful. So we'll have to see what ends up happening there. On Friday night, you got UAB at Western Kentucky. This one could be very, very interesting, especially when it comes to conference USA title implications, right? Uh, Western Kentucky likes to throw the ball around a lot. That UAB secondary is vicious. So, yeah, I'm interested in that one. Cincinnati at SMU. SMU has not looked good this year. But they they do have pieces, and they have looked good in spurts, right? It, it, especially against Navy. They gave up two late touchdowns against Navy. They cost them the cover. But when it comes down to it, I think Cincinnati's just the overall better team. they got more talent. At, I think they've got more talent than SMU. Uh, how about this? They've got a better culture because obviously SMU in the first year with Rhett Lashley. So something to pay attention to there. Can Cincy travel? They haven't looked very good either this year. Boise at Air Force is my last G5 game of the week. I think Boise may have figured this thing out. I really do. With Dirk Cutter in, as the offensive coordinator and uh, in Green, the new quarterback, I think they might have figured this out. Their defense was never that bad. They just could not get anything going on offense. Hank Bachmeyer's gone. The offense coordinator's gone. 
new things going on at Boise, they've always been able to figure out Air Force's offense. If Troy Calhoun can't find a way to swap things up, maybe just a little bit for this game, yeah, Boise could absolutely shut them down. So, very interested. Very interested in that. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.